the European Huntington Association has come to Porto to visit CGPP at Itreses to know more about Project Decide, which is a project that has a big focus on genetic information uh, about Huntington's disease uh, and the importance of supporting and knowing more about uh, communication uh, within families impacted by Huntington's disease. Let's have a look. Well, CGPP was founded in 1999 by Professor Jorge de Sequeiros, but actually the history of CGPP started a little bit before that. Uh, I would say uh, around 92, when Professor Jorge de Sequeiros founded Unigen, which was a research group basically uh, that was trying to understand better neurological um, diseases that appeared in uh, adult adulthood um, and with that uh, scientific advances and uh, in the next years many of these uh, neurological diseases late onset neurological diseases the they could understand what was the biological mechanism behind that and uh, some genetic testing and genetic counseling started to be requested the mission of CGPP from the very beginning was to support the national health system with genetic testing and genetic counseling and in the beginning only for late onset neurological disease such as Huntington disease and um, always with a focus on quality with a focus on uh, a comprehensive approach to the patient uh, and a very high sense of social justice and uh, trying to um, start medical genetics in Portugal, uh, if we can say so. Nowadays, and this year we are celebrating 25 years, so it's a very important date as well for us. Um, we have supported over 5,000 patients, uh, of which over 500 was, were patients that undergone uh, predictive testing for Huntington disease. Um, and we are now uh, a big and very recognized center and we performed around 10,000 genetic tests per year so things grew a lot but always we kept a lot of focus on neurological diseases and specifically late onset neurological diseases so predictive genetic tests uh, are very complex and uh, um, it has to be done with a very careful way and uh, Professor George Sequeiros actually recognized that need back in the 90s. Uh, even before the establishment of CGPP, he published the first version of the National uh, Protocol for Predictive Testing of Neurological Late Onset Diseases in 95. Um, and the goal of, of, the, of the protocol and our goal here in CGPP is uh, uh, essentially to make sure that patients uh, understand the impact of the genetic testing they are performing in that time of, of, of their lives. Uh, and that goes beyond the medical and scientific aspects related with the risk of uh, having the disease, the risk of transmitting to their children, uh, but also with the psychosocial aspects related to it, the emotional burden it, it might have, as well as um, the impact it can have in family dynamics, and professional lives and other areas of the, the patient's life. So um, our protocol tries to uh, include all that. And for that, it has to have many steps. That includes uh, two pre-test genetic counseling sessions and one post-test genetic counseling session, as well as a psychological assessment and an ongoing follow-up uh, of uh, psychology. And basically, this uh, approach um, wants to make sure that the patient benefits the best of genetic testing, predictive genetic testing, and minimizes the risks of predictive genetic testing. It is also uh, important to highlight, and we always try to ensure that, uh, the confidence between the multidisciplinary team and the patient, 
it is very important that the patient feels they are safe here, that the, the information is private, that it's confidential, and that the test is done with the high quality standards that it deserves. Um, and also, um, it's always important to, to reinforce as well that coming and starting a protocol doesn't mean you have to do the genetic testing. It might be just uh, answering your doubts, answering some questions, have psychological assessment, and then you can decide, the patient can decide whether they should go ahead with the testing, whether they should delay it to another time in life, or whether they may decide uh, not to make it at all. So we started by recognizing that um, talking with family members about Huntington's disease or other inherited genetic conditions uh, can be difficult for, for many people. Many people understand uh, the importance of sharing this information uh, with their family members. Um, however, um, communicating information about the genetic condition, about the genetic risks or about the, the, the availability of genetic testing isn't always easy for, for many people. We know that many people really struggle uh, with starting conversations about Huntington's or other genetic conditions with their uh, family members. We also know that uh, sometimes people tend to uh, avoid or delay uh, this kind of conversation with their relatives, with their family members. Mm, and often we also know uh, both clinically and uh, by our research, that this can lead to strained family relationships. Uh, obviously, not all families struggle uh, with their communication. Uh, in many families, this communication goes really smoothly and people uh, uh, get the information about Huntington's uh, really smoothly or quickly and without delays. But uh, we know that often this is a challenge and many people struggle with finding uh, the best way and the right time to have these conversations within their families. At this side, we aim to understand how people decide to share information about the genetic condition and about genetic risks with their family members when undergoing uh, genetic testing, predictive genetic testing or presymptomatic genetic testing. We'll look at how uh, the genetic counseling influences people's decisions about this kind of, uh, of communication and we'll also look at what other factors in people's lives uh, also influence these, uh, these decisions about sharing uh, this kind of information. The SIDE is a three-year project funded by the Portuguese Foundation for Science, uh, Science and Technology. Uh, and it brings together a, a multidisciplinary team of researchers involving clinical and health psychologists, a clinical geneticist, a genetic counselor, and, and also a patient uh, representative. So supported by three international consultants that, uh, that helped us in the different uh, phases of the project regarding ethical aspects uh, and also uh, in the methods. The project is based at uh, I3S, at the University of Porto, uh, with its headquarters at uh, CGPP. The University of Aveiro is also involved, uh, and the European Huntington's Association uh, is also a project partner. So the ultimate goal at this side is to um, is to create a framework for genetic counseling to help healthcare professionals facilitate uh, uh, the decision-making process uh, of people undergoing genetic testing um, uh, to inform their family members about uh, genetic risks, about genetic testing, and overall about the genetic condition. We started by doing two uh, literature reviews. One focus on how families uh, communicate about inherited genetic conditions uh, like Huntington's disease and other uh, conditions as well. Um, and also the other literature review was focused on process studies, uh, uh, genetic counseling process studies uh, that address 
family communication and how all this is processed during the, the clinical encounter. Right now, we are uh, finishing our data collection. So the data collection uh, was conducted in the, at the genetics department of three Portuguese hospitals, uh, in Porto and Coimbra uh, and uh, in, in Braga. Um, so basically, it involved um, audio recording and observing genetic counseling uh, appointments, uh, asking people to keep uh, diaries to document their thoughts and their feelings as they uh, go through their reflections about family communication uh, and at the end hopefully we will have the chance to interview the participants to to look back to all the process uh, and really our aim is to know more about how people decide uh, their family communication the next step is to uh, uh, start to create our co-creation panel, uh, as I said, involving all these key uh, uh, multiple stakeholders, healthcare professionals, researchers, patients and family members, um, patients representatives, uh, to help us based on the previous findings that we have collected and help us devise the framework for genetic counseling. Hopefully in 2026 this framework will see the light of the day and hopefully it will be used by healthcare professionals and uh, potentially uh, help people uh, to go through their decisions about family communication. Hopefully um, with, with our findings we hope to influence how the clinical encounter and how genetic counseling um, addresses the issue of family communication. So we know that um, in several instances, this theme is convened uh, more as a informational transaction uh, between the healthcare professional and the patient and then the, the family members. So hopefully we will try to influence uh, genetic counseling uh, to incorporate perhaps a more re relational uh, stance and a relational view that perceives family communication uh, as a process and not as a one-off event. So people often need time to go through their thinking and to go through their emotions and to actually to make their decisions about informing the family. Mm -hmm.